Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I just finished up filming a Dive Hot PS episode, which if you don't know, the PS stands for both Postscript and Patreon Special. It is a monthly supplement series to Dive Hot Weekly that is created around patron input. Uh, but I just finished dyeing some 100% silk yarn for the first time, and this yarn is actually setting on my stovetop right now. But I do have one more skein of Knit Picks Gloss fingering weight yarn pre-soaked with some vinegar. This yarn is 70% merino, 30% silk. I know it absorbs color slower than say Stroll or some superwash wool nylon blend, but it still is really beautiful and has a great sheen. And so I thought that taking some of these colors that I used in that Dye Pot PS episode, maybe even using them straight from my stock solution bottles, we could create some kind of hand-painted colorway on my countertop to steam set. Especially since in that video I added plastic wrap to my countertop that I didn't end up needing or using, and so this is going to give me an opportunity to use that versus just discard it. Uh, in general, I do try to avoid using plastic wrap, but some kinds of techniques really make it useful, uh, and so, you know, I'm not sure if the colorway I'm creating now, I might have been comfortable putting it directly in a steamer basket, but we'll see where the dyes take me. Because honestly, sometimes when I have my blank canvas on the counter and some dye stocks on hand, I, I start adding color and then decide how I want to continue applying. And so I think that that is a really fun way to process this. And anyway, let's go dye some yarn. I don't have a lot of volume of dye, but I have um, a lot of pigment located here. So we've got these 1% stock solutions. This is a deep magenta and royal blue combination. I've got a 2% stock solution of some silver gray, and I might just stick with those two. I have a tiny bit of a 1% stock solution of true black, but I think I'm going to stick with the magenta and silver gray. This kind of line application that I've started here is something that I typically enjoy to do low immersion, but by doing this on the counter, things aren't going to spread out nearly oh, as much. And we may have had our first little clog, but that is okay. I'm not worried about colors spreading. This is more, I'm having some fun. Um, I did have vinegar in the pre-soak. This yarn actually pre-soaked for probably about 36 hours before um, I added vinegar, and then it's probably soaked for maybe an hour with some vinegar in there. But this is not really speckled, but I'm making something a, bit, a, a little splotchy. And mainly, I'm curious about how far things might spread. Um, Things would spread, and I guess it would, could have been helpful to have, say, like Stroll as a comparison here, but uh, low immersion, things would spread a, a bunch. I did, gosh, was it, I don't know, remember if it was March 2019 or April in the dialogue when I did the aquarium yarn, and I did that on gloss because I wanted that little bit of shine to sort of represent the water that I was emulating for that colorway. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't remember exactly. I'm using these Derma Squeeze bottles, and unfortunately, they are prone to getting clogged um, because the holes are so tiny. So I'm actually gonna go rinse this out because I just had dye pour out around the cap. But you don't see a lot of variegated hand-painted, well, I mean, you might see some hand-painted on silk, but I don't see, like, a lot of commercially dyed, like, more random patterns on silk. I'm sure indie dyers do a lot, um, but I'm just thinking about, like, what, say, like, knit picks might offer as a hand-painted kind of colorway, but I could definitely be wrong. Um, it would be cool, knit picks, if you did something like a different, I mean, I know your sock labs and your more experimental colorways are based around um, 
stroll in Hawthorne, but it could be cool to um, add some other fingering weight bases in there. And I think I'm clogged again. Uh, let's see, I don't want to squeeze too hard and get diver. Okay, I will go and adjust that in a moment. Um, I did notice some clumps of dye in there when I was using this earlier, so. Um, the goal is not to get complete coverage all around, but just to add pigment all over and paying attention around the ties where sometimes things can be a bit disrupted. And I guess, I mean, I'm actually pretty happy here, um, not even worrying about unclogging that pink. Yeah, I mean, I like this colorway. This is fun. I think that it'll be a lot less pigmented than it looks now just because of the way that these blends absorb, uh, absorb color because I think that they can in general take a lot of color. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it here and let's get ready to go and steam set this. Now, I still have some dye left, so we didn't use it up, but I mean, I think that I've got another mega time lapse Mega leave no dye behind time lots coming up. I suppose this is leave no pre-soaked yarn behind today. All right, I'm now gonna take this plastic wrap and wrap things up. So this isn't completely necessary today. The colorway I did is random. And as I said, I mean, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do more just like pink on one side and gray on the other. Uh, yeah, since this is random, I could be okay just putting this directly into a steamer basket um, without that plastic wrap. But since we have the plastic wrap, I may as well utilize it. This is a steamer basket for my multi-pot that I love, and I can usually fit around 200 grams of yarn in the smaller one for my eight quart pot. Um, but I, I love this. I use the pot both for immersion dyeing and then I can steam. It even has a pasta insert, which I use when I um, doing multiple colors in mason jars, or occasionally I'll even use that pasta insert to steam a lot more than say the 200 grams that I can fit here in this little container. I also have a 12 quart pot. I just turned this on and I'm gonna let it heat and steam I think for 40 minutes. All right, after 40 minutes, I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna put the lid back on to let this cool off in here, but it is so steamy in here, I can't tell how much the colors have spread. I know I see gray, pink, and white, so we'll have to evaluate that later on. But I'm gonna let it cool completely before we unwrap it. It is the moment of truth. Ooh, these colors, oh, I gotta do this on the countertop more. I mean, this is one of my favorite techniques to do low immersion, but oh, this is pretty. Fingers crossed that, oh my gosh, so the colors absolutely spread uh, as I had expected, but oh, it is deep. Um, this is a highly, highly variegated, random, like not in a repeating way, but in a way that will be uh, fun to work with. This is beautiful. I am so excited. The one thing I need to caution myself is that it might look way more pastel once it's dry. Right now, it doesn't look pastel and there's no bleeding. Woohoo! I'm gonna use a tiny bit, just a little bit of some dish soap, um, some clear dish soap in here to finish cleaning this, but then, you know, I'll go ahead and rinse out that soap put the yarn through my uh, Nina Soft spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. But, oh, I am so, so happy. I'm happy there is white left. I'm happy with the spread. This is just a fun colorway. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. There is no question that these colors spread out a bit, uh, but Man, I mean, I think that if I had done this low immersion in a pan, maybe they could have struck faster, but this is stunning, 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 and on a wool silk blend. As I think I talked about earlier, I've done watercolory techniques on this gloss base, this 
wool silk blend, but man, I need to dye more of this. It is just gorgeous, it is soft, and I'm so happy with how this turned out. You know, I don't think I've tried dyeing this base using, for example, dry acid dye powder, and I really should try that because my gut is like, oh, it's not gonna speckle well, and I know that uh, colors strike slower than, say, superwash wool, which is ideal for speckling, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Here is our pretty skein with the other skein of gloss and then a stroll and luminance 100% um, silk yarn that I dyed in the corresponding Dye Pop PS video. I know this is more of a leave no yarn behind versus a leave no dye behind, but I am so happy. The times when I have leftover materials that I had prepped for the day that I want to add color to, it's there's something freeing about it when I don't think too much about what I'm doing and I just let the yarn and the colors really speak to me. And this is, this colorway is an, a wonderful example of it and I really should do more of this on the countertop versus when I do this technique low immersion. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely, absolutely thrilled. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and like the video. Uh, this is the best way you could support the content here on the channel, but I also have a Patreon. Uh, you can find information about that in the link in the video description if you want to look at other ways to support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I have so much fun filming these videos, both the more planned videos where I have an exper actual experiment in mind, and then the ones where I sort of just let the, the yarn and the color do the talking, like today. And it's a lot of fun, and I want to thank you so much for supporting this content, because this is something I am really passionate about, and it brings me a lot of joy to share my passion with all of you. Thank you so much for watching.